Welcome everyone to another episode of The Listful Soul, A Devotion to Mary. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the title, Our Lady of Lourdes. Toulouse is a city in France, one that I must say I did want to visit when um, I made my trip to, uh, to France in 2018. You know, unfortunately, um, I was not able to, you know, squeeze that in. Um, but, you know, having gone through, um, you know, having gone through the research of this title and, and even seeing the movie, on Our Lady of Lourdes and the story of Bernadette. Oh, how I wish I did squeeze in on uh, this visit. But I guess um, it's never too late. Hopefully once this pandemic subsides and travel opens up and everything is safe, I know this is definitely going to be a place where I'm going to um, visit. So let's talk about how Mary got this title. So let's go back um, several, several years ago in 1844 in the city of Lourdes in France, Bernadette Subrius was born. So she came from a very poor family, um, not educated at all. Um, the only education that she had was a little bit of catechism that she was given, you know, in, in, in the evenings. And, and that was about it. Now, at the age of 13, Bernadette was preparing for her first Holy Communion. On February 1858, Bernadette, her sister, and a friend of theirs went out to get wood for fire. So these two companions with Bernadette, you know, ran ahead of her and kind of left, you know, Bernadette struggling at the back to keep up with them. And it was more so because Bernadette wasn't um, in the best of health, she was suffering from asthma, so she couldn't run as fast as her sister and friend. So anyway, they, they were running towards the river, and when uh, Bernadette finally made it, and as she was removing her shoes, um, you know, because she had to make her way across the river to get onto the other side, she was startled by a peculiar wind and, you know, and a rustling sound. So... You know, she looked toward the grotto and, you know, there were caves on that riverbank. And near the opening of that grotto, Bernadette, um, you know, noticed that there was suddenly a golden light, a bright light that came out of that cave. So when she looked, uh, you know, closely is where she saw a lady of great beauty, as she calls it. And this lady was dressed in a pure white robe with a blue sash, a veil over her head, and a rosary in her hands. And she also had um, yellow roses at her feet. So this lady looked at Bernadette and immediately, you know, smiled at her and signaled her to, you know, to come to her. And so Bernadette took out her rosary, seeing the rosary in this lady's hand, just, you know, took out her own rosary. She knelt before this lady and um, the lady asked Bernadette to, you know, start praying the rosary. And so Bernadette, in her obedience, began praying it. So after she was done with that, um, you know, she got up and when she looked up, when Bernadette looked up, she saw that the lady had disappeared. So Bernadette went on her way and she told her sister and her friend what had happened. And, you know, the girls told Bernadette that she was just being silly, um, you know, and was probably just seeing things. Now, while Bernadette was at home, she felt very drawn toward this grotto. And that vision of the lady that she had seen kept playing in her mind, you know, it, it kept appearing in her mind. And, and, and I think that's what really drew her toward it. So the next Sunday, she went there again. And when she went there again, was uh, the lady appeared to her. Now, the third time when Bernadette went to the grotto, the lady at this time spoke to her. And the lady told Bernadette to come there 
every day for the next 15 days. So shortly after, um, you know, Bernadette began to pray the rosary at every apparition, everyone really noticed how her face transfigured and just illuminated. Now on the fifth visit, the lady taught Bernadette a prayer, which Bernadette recited daily for the rest of her life. But Bernadette never revealed to anyone what that prayer was. But she did say that she was told to always bring a blessed candle along with her, and which is now, I believe, um, at the shrine in Lunes, candles burn perpetually at that grotto. So now on the sixth visit, the lady told Bernadette to pray for sinners, to pray for sinners and uh, for penitents. Now it was also during this particular time, which was in February of 1858, where the officials uh, got a physician to examine Bernadette, you know, because they assumed that um, maybe she was not in her senses, maybe this was all just, you know, a fiction of her imagination. So they wanted to examine her. But the physician examined her, but couldn't find anything unusual with her whenever she was present at this grotto. He found all of her vitals to be uh, as normal as they should be. All right, so on the next visit, the lady now entrusted Bernadette with three secrets. But she told Bernadette never to tell anybody. And Bernadette kept that secret. Until today, no one really knows what these three secrets were. Although there was, I believe, some inkling to what, um, you know, two of them maybe. But the third one, I believe, is still uh, a secret that Bernadette kind of took with her. Now, on the ninth visit, the lady had told Bernadette to drink from the fountain and bathe in it. Now, Bernadette was very puzzled because apart from that, uh, you know, that cave where that grotto was, there was never a fountain or a spring. Um, there was only the river that was close by. But in her obedience to what the lady said, she uh, went to, um, you know, where, where the cave was and she just started, you know, um, digging the ground and, you know, loosening off the gravel that was there. And as she dug deeper with her bare hands, she noticed that, you know, the ground was, was becoming moist and that eventually a pool was being formed. And that's the same spring that is now present at the shrine in Lourdes. And it was from this very spring that many people experienced healing. Now moving along a couple of visits later, and I believe this was on the 11th visit, the lady had wanted Bernadette to now tell the priest to build a chapel over here, to build a chapel in this place. And again, the lady reminded Bernadette the same message during her 14th visit about building the chapel. Now during the 16th apparition, which also occurred on the Feast of the Annunciation, it was then that the lady revealed her identity to Bernadette. And she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Now the, the, the amazement of, of this particular statement was that when the lady told Bernadette that I am the Immaculate Conception. As I mentioned earlier, Bernadette was not an educated girl and she had no, she had no clue of what the Immaculate Conception was. But when she went back and she told, you know, told her family, told those around her what the lady had told her, that was when they were stunned and then they realized that it was the Virgin Mary that has been appearing to Bernadette. So after all of these um, apparitions, 
Bernadette uh, joined the Order of the Sisters of Charity, and she believed that this was one of the secrets that uh, the Virgin had told her. And, um, and I quote where she says that um, the lady told her that she would not find happiness in this life, but in the life that is to come. So during Bernadette's time at the Sisters of Charity, she unfortunately became very ill. She suffered with tuberculosis of the bones. And on April 16, 1879, Bernadette had died from this illness and she was 34 years old. Bernadette was buried on the convent grounds in Nevers in France. And her body was found to be incorruptible when they exhumed it 30 years after her death. And once again, uh, they, when they exhumed it a second time, 10 years later, it was still found to be incorruptible. So it was said that um, the cross that she was holding was oxidized, but her body was still intact. So this sacred relic of Bernadette's body you know, is placed in a coffin of gold and glass and, and this can be viewed to this very day in the chapel of St. Bernadette at the Mother House in Nevers, France. And so that, my friends, is, is the story of how Mary got the title of Our Lady of Lourdes. It certainly is a very interesting um, story of how Mary appeared to this little girl. And once again, you know, if, if I were to make a comparison or, you know, from um, this particular story as well as, um, you know, the, the last episode that I did about Our Lady of Fatima, if you notice that Mary, um, you know, appears to the innocents. Mary appears to those who is the poorest of the poor. And that leaves me um, you know, leaves that question rather, you know, how many of us are really striving to reach the heights of, of everything, you know, where we want uh, the best of uh, the best of clothes, the best of houses, the best of cars. But if you look at all of these, does Mama Mary even really look to what you have? She doesn't look for the best, but she looks for the, the best in your heart. What have you done for your family? What have you done for those who come to you in need? That's who Mama Mary is looking for. That's who Mama Mary is seeking for, to bring you closer to her son. And so another point that, you know, stands out in this story is Mama Mary's message of saying the rosary. Mama's Mary of saying the rosary and praying for sinners. It was also in this um, apparition where she told um, Bernadette on one occasion to pray for sinners. And that again reminds us of what we have to do as children of God. What we need to do for our brothers and sisters is to pray for them, pray for their souls. Again, especially during these this very, very difficult times. I'd like to now introduce you to a good friend of mine, Maria, all the way from Argentina, who reached out to me to share her personal encounter with Our Lady of Lourdes and how healing was brought into her life. Hello, my name is Maria Mary. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Sorry for my English. I'm a bit nervous and a bit shy. So I hope you can all understand me. Um, I'd love to share my testimony of faith with all of you. And I have always been near our Holy Mother because I come from a Catholic family and I attended to a Catholic school called Nuestra Señora de Lourdes, Mary of Lourdes. <clears throat> but I never felt so close to our mother until I got pregnant and doctors told me that my baby had a cyst somewhere in her belly. 
as they didn't know if the baby was a boy or a girl, they couldn't tell me exactly where it came from. They told me that if it went bigger, the baby would need a uh, surgery. I could only think of Mary of Lourdes, and I started attending to a Saturday service at a Lourdes chapel near my house. After two long months of the diagnosis, one Saturday, I couldn't do nothing but pray, and I stood in front of our Mary, uh, crying because I was desperate. And I asked her to save my daughter because she was my whole life, and I was suffering for not being able to save her. The following Monday, I went to get an ultrasound, and after two long months, the cyst was gone. I felt so full of, of grace that my daughter's name is Lucia Lourdes for a mother, and now I know that Mary is always with me. My message to everyone listening is that when you have true faith, nothing is impossible for God. So, just have faith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria, for that beautiful and inspiring testimony. And so I hope that, you know, this the story was uplifting to each and every one who's listening. And I urge you to go ahead and read more about St. Bernadette. Um, and if you have a chance, yeah, go ahead and visit Nevers in France. Uh, as well as Lourdes in France. And I know, uh, like I said, once travel opens, I'm definitely making another trip to France. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in for yet another episode of The Listful Soul, a devotion to Mary. If you enjoyed this podcast or wish to send along a question or have a friendly critique, or even if you have a story that you want to share, go ahead and, you know, drop me an email at listfulsoulpodcast at gmail.com. Or if you have my number, go ahead and message me. The music in the introduction and the close of this podcast was composed by Garrett DeMello. The artwork in my podcast logo and episode were designed by Anahita Ray and Michelle Fernandez, respectively. You can check them out on their social media handles mentioned below. Do spread the word of my podcast via your social media handles and let's bring more souls closer to him. See you on the next episode. Until then, stay blessed and stay safe.